Nice watch, run it. Hands in the air now. Hands in the air, run it. Hands in the air now. Hands in the air, run it. Hands in the air now. Hands in the air. Hands in the air now. Hands in the air. Immediately the first thing I noticed about the game is how good looking the environments are. Colors pop out everywhere and the graphics are A1. Every level is set up in a vertical style fashion and the game uses mystical elevators to travel from location to location. The story has a narrator and he pretty much carries the whole game with his inconsistent voice acting. At times his voice can be quite charming and often cheesy as hell. Renato said, but this is what I was hired to do. At least let me run ahead and warn the scientists you're coming. So, Lapino was intent on being a hero, just like him. Mainly because he voices all the characters and sadly can make the experience cringeworthy. Moving on, I didn't expect the story to be what it is. The fun part is that it actually caught me off guard. You play as a one-eyed power fox, Renato, and he comes across a book he believes shouldn't fall into the wrong hands. In an act of heroism, he joins up with the rebellion to fight against the Emperor. Sound familiar? Without spoiling too much, there is a majority of stories you can play because most of the story is, how do I say, choosing your own destiny. At the end of every level, you may have to make a decision, in which most cases will not end well. With that said, there is plenty of replay value here, but depending on the player, can make or break the game because of the repetitiveness. The level design seems linear at first, but as you replay certain levels, in which you might find yourself doing from time to time, the game opens up and you realize how big a level can be. Sometimes it can be a little confusing though. If you get stuck or lost, you may have to wait until you die until you can restart your last checkpoint. That doesn't sound as bad until you become stuck, or at least until they patch, and the best choice you have is quitting into the main menu and then you have to start all the way over. Story's sword fighting mechanics are swift and smooth. This is where the game really shines. The RPG element holds back from turning the game into a DMC hack and slash, which can make the gameplay that much more enjoyable. Weapons and upgrade spots are also relevant in the game. Renardo fights with swords and each sword has its own unique abilities. For example, one sword can freeze an opponent while another speeds up your attacks and maneuverability. Renardo is also equipped with a grappling hook which he uses to grab onto small points to thrust them across small planes or pulling shields from enemies and pulling them closer. Doors are scattered all over the landscape that only open with certain swords. You have to come back to the level that will open the door since you probably won't have it in your inventory at the time. Another thing I would take away from the fun is that there isn't much variety of foes. Ravens are the main bad guys you will be fighting. Usually they are sent in large numbers and can become quite pesky. Special enemies are in the game as well, and even though you may have to fight a special enemy once in a while, they don't appear as often as they should. Stories the Path of Destinies is a bright and fun action RPG with a creative point of view. The fighting mechanics are great, but the story can derail the flow of the game. I enjoyed it a couple of hours at a time. I am the PlayStation Ninja. Thanks for watching the video. Click, like, subscribe, it don't matter what you do. As long as you bust them out on the video, bust nuts everywhere and have a good day.